Hello everyone, welcome back again to my YouTube channel. My name is Osere Me. If today is the first time you're seeing my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Hit on the subscribe button if you're yet to subscribe, and also please turn on the notification bell so that you become a member of my sewing family. Now, on this channel, as you must have already seen, I share sewing tutorials and pattern drafting videos. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to draft the pattern for the making of this very beautiful milk made dress now today's video is going to be the pattern drafting in my next tutorial i'll be sharing with you guys how to sew it this particular pattern is a little bit different from the milk made tutorial i posted um, about a month ago so if you're interested in seeing how to go about this particular one keep on watching and if you're still yet to subscribe to my channel please hit on the subscribe button and let's get started with the video so guys this is the fabric i am going to be using to make this dress this fabric is a crepe fabric and i have two yards of fabric here if you're on a bigger size you can make sure to have about three yards of fabric so let's go ahead and draft the pattern i've already drawn out some lines as you can see on this pattern paper so let me just go ahead and label this right here is the shoulder line here we have the bust line and here we have the waistline. I mistakenly wrote under bust before. I have not drawn out the under bust line yet. This right here is the waistline, my shoulder to waist measurement. And then I have the hip line. And lastly, I have the dress length, the length for the whole dress. Again, this is the shoulder line. This is the bust line, waistline. We have the hip line here and then the length of our dress. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my body measurements to this. But first, from the shoulder, I'm going to come down to my under bust, which is 13 right here. This was the line I'm supposed to have drawn earlier, but I didn't. This is my under bust line. Now, from the center point here on the shoulder line, I'm going to go in by 3 inches for my neck width. And I'll be coming down by 3 inches as well for the neck depth. This is just a basic um, measurement because I'm not even going to be using this neckline. So I'll just draw a, a round neckline across as you can see. Now from the center again, I'm going to go in by half of my shoulder measurement which is marked here at 7. I'll come down by 1 inch for my shoulder slope and I'm going to connect it to the top of my neckline. Now from this shoulder slope, I'm going to come down by 7 inches, which is the measurement I get when I divide my bust by 6 and I add 1.5 to whatever I get. So I'm going to draw a straight line across this and label it the chest line. Now I'll connect a point from the shoulder slope down to this chest line here. Make sure it's a straight line. Just go ahead and connect it like this. So like I said, this is the chest line. Let's not forget now i'm going to measure what i have from the top of the shoulder to the chest line and divide it into two i do this a lot on my channel guys you guys should be used to it and from this point i'm going to go in by half of an inch and now on the chest line i'm going to divide my bust measurement into four and i'll be making a mark here so now i'll connect this point this point and this point with my curve to give me a beautiful armhole now for my dart, I'm going to go in by half of my nipple to nipple measurement on the bust line, on the under bust line, on the waistline, and also on the hip line. I'll be connecting all these points with a straight line. Now on the waistline, I'm going to go in by half an inch on both sides of this line to create my dart. And then from this point here, I will come down by 4 inches and I'm going to connect all those dots. To give me my dots now on the waistline here i'm going to divide my waist measurement into four i made a mark and i measured the dart intake that i had and replaced it back so now i am going to connect from the armhole down to meet this waistline here and then on the hip line i'm going to go ahead and divide my hip measurement into four i'm making a mark here and I'll be using my hip curve to make a nice curve from the waist down to meet the hip line. On the dress length here, I am going to measure what I have on the hip line, which is 9 inches here. I'll be removing 1 inch from that. And here, I'll mark 8 inch. So I'm just going to also connect from the hip line now to meet the end of the dress. Guys, this is a basic dress pattern as you can see. We have both the top and the skirt part together in this pattern. 
Now on this waistline, I'll draw a straight line across because remember that this dress has a band. Now from this dart here, I'll just use this dart leg here to create a straight line to meet the underbust line. And I'll do the same thing on this other side, just create a straight line to the underbust. And I am going to use my curve to just connect like tiny curves to meet the top of my darts. Now I'll also be drawing out my underbust line like this. Um, so this here is going to be my band for this dress. Now I'm going to come to the top of the shoulder here and divide what I have into two equal halves and connect from that point to the bust point. Now for the neckline of this dress, you can decide to maintain the chest line or go up a little bit. So for me, I want to go up by half of an inch. If you are very busty, you can go out by as much as one and a half inch or one inch. So I'm using these points now to just draw a straight line across. Now on this line that I have across from the shoulder, I'm going to go out on both sides by half of an inch. So I'm going to connect these down to the bust points with my curve. Now this little bustier I just drafted here is going to be like the lining for this top part of the dress. Then I have the band and the skirt part here. Now we're just going to go ahead and cut this out. And then I'll be tracing this pattern out, the top pattern actually, for us to use and carry out a slash and spread method for the bustier area. But first of all, go ahead and cut out all your pieces. Once you are done, you have the skirt, the band and the top like this. So this band here, I'm going to close up the dart and just use a tape to secure it so that we don't have to be stitching in darts again. So I'll just close up the dart here and just secure it with my tape. So this is going to be the band just like you see in this dress we are trying to make um, right here. So I'm going to label this the band so that you don't forget. You notice that the waist on the skirt looks as if it's longer than the band right now. That's because we've not taken away the dart from the skirt. Now this top area here is going to be the part where we are going to be slashing and spreading. So I just placed this on two other pieces of paper. Make sure you're placing it on two. And I went ahead to trace it out. I have just one here, but I traced it out on two. One for the back pattern and one for me to do slash and spread. Now, this is the center front here and this is the side front for this top pattern. Now, I can go ahead and cut off the bustier. This one right here is going to be the lining for the top area of this dress, okay? Now, this one here is the one we are going to be using for the ruchness in front. So, I'm just going to go ahead and make points about one inch apart, just like you see me doing like this. And then, I will draw straight lines all the way to the top of this paper here and then label one to seven and go ahead and cut out along all the lines that i have here now these pieces here are going to be the one i'll spread on my fabric when i'm cutting them out to give me the richness in front then these ones here the center front and side front are going to be the lining on the inside so these are the ruffle pieces here arranged this is the band and then this one here is going to be the skirt part. Then this is going to be the lining for the top part of the front. So this is all for the pattern drafting. Now I folded a piece of fabric into two. This fabric is in a fold. And I went ahead to draw a straight line around this end and another one around this end. This one here is about one and a half inch away from the center. This is going to be for my zipper allowance. And then the other one at the end is for me to fold this fabric up at the end okay that's the allowance for me to fold it at the end so you can see how i placed this front skirt pattern i placed it exactly on the line that i drew here because the excess on the center front which is about one and a half inch away is going to be for the zipper allowance now i'm also placing the band this is the one we drafted for the front i'm placing it on the same line as well because the band for the back as well is going to have zipper allowance guys basically what i'm doing here is just using my front pattern to cut out the back just add this stitching allowance to it now for the top as well remember that i told you guys to cut out two earlier so i'm pinning this as well just like i did make sure that the center is on the line exactly 
and i'll go ahead and cut out just like you see me doing like this remember there was no stitching allowance on these patterns when we drafted them out so i'm adding my stitching allowance as you can see i'm adding about half inch to the top and bottoms and for the sides i'm adding about one inch okay you can see the stitching allowance i have on the sides is more than what i have like in between now i'm also going ahead to just open up this center back here because this is where our zipper is supposed to be and this is basically all for the drafting of all the back pieces the top the band and the skirt part here with the zipper allowance i've drafted out the front skirt pattern as you can see now this one did not have any zipper allowance in front like we did on the back pattern so you see where the front skirt started from so this is it for the skirt parts of this dress now for the ruffle in front you can see i folded this piece of um, fabric into two i'm going to go ahead and use my ruler to draw a straight line across just like you see me doing like this there is no special measurements for this now this is the folded edge now on this folded edge i'm going to be placing my pattern labeled one and then it will be followed by two three four five six and seven in that order so i'm going to just arrange them like this right now i'm not using any measurements i'm just arranging them in place so for the very first one i'm going to go ahead and pin it down pin it on the center front just make sure it's pinned like this now before we pin down the second part labeled two i am going to be um spreading this with a particular measurement so for these patterns i decided to use one inch so now i'm pinning this down after like one inch separation now after this pattern two i'm going to spread it again with one inch and add three and i'll continue with that pattern using one inch to separate each of the pieces make sure that all of your pieces are exactly on the line that you drew that was just the basic reason why we drew out this line so now after pinning down all my pieces i'm going to go ahead and cut it out and remember like i did before i am not going to be cutting exactly on the fabric i'm going to be giving stitching allowance all the way around now this is going to be my ruffle piece in front this is the back with the zipper allowance here as you can see now these are the two top pieces for the front and back then this is the skirt for the front and back as you can see the back has stitching allowance and then for the band for the back this is it it has a stitching allowance now to cut out the one for the front because the one for the front is not going to be having any allowance i'm going to be placing the center of the band here directly on the folded edge of my fabric and i'm also going to just cut it out um, making sure that i'm using the same stitching allowance that i left i already have an idea of how much stitching allowance i left so by the time i place it you see it's exactly the same thing even though i didn't have to measure the stitching allowance so these are all the pieces that we're going to be using to make this um, dress now for the lining for the top part i just went ahead to place the center front of this lining piece on the folded edge of my fabric like this and i'm pinning it down and then i'm um, the side front i'm shifting it a little bit away because we need space for stitching allowance i am pinning it down and i'm going to go ahead and cut this out just like you see me doing like this i might also be cutting out lining pieces for the other part of the top and the band but i'll be doing that in the next video after i've checked to be sure that the fabric i have left is going to be enough for the sleeve so these are all the pieces we are going to be using to make this dress in my next video we are going to be sewing it all together